Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, doing our new moon report for the sixth month of the sacred calendar, which is Elul. Now, if this is your first time seeing a video over here at Coach in the Fight, I would say welcome. And be sure to hit that subscribe button and that bell notification button because we're always putting out information related to sacred months, the biblical calendar, holy feast days, new moon days, and Sabbath days. So be sure to get a notification when our classes come out for future biblical dates. In this class, we're going to talk about the new moon. We're going to let you know when it will occur. We're going to let you know some of the things that we should be doing and paying attention to on the new moon day. We're going to let you know when the Sabbath days will fall, the sacred Sabbath days for the next four weeks. We're going to go in and look at the events that are mentioned in the Holy Bible concerning the sixth month. There's some interesting fun facts there on some stuff that occurred in the past during the sixth month. We're going to give you a heads up on the seventh month, just briefly talking about it. And maybe a few other things as our Heavenly Father sees fit to put on my heart during this class. Alright, so let's get right into it. Now, one of the reasons why it's important to understand when the new moon occurs is because of New Moon Day. This is a celebration that takes place every month amongst our Father's people. Because whether you are aware of it or not, there's a lot going on on the new moon day. As we can see here in Ezekiel chapter 46 verses 1 through 3. That the inner court of the sanctuary is opened during the new moon day. The same as it is on the Sabbath day. The new moon is kind of like a Sabbath day. When you think of all of the spiritual events that are taking place behind the scenes, the inner court being opened, that's a big deal. We should be paying attention to that. And that's why many people have a new moon celebration each month. It's not really considered a work day. So you'll have a lot of people spending time with our father in his word or in meditation or in prayer there are people who have dinners during this day if you remember the story of king david and king saul it was on the new moon day that david was missing from the table the dinner table when saul realized that david was aware of his plot to kill him that all took place on the new moon celebration. Now there's a lot of people who are starting to stop by our channel making comments on our videos wanting to get information on what it is that we are supposed to be doing in order to get right with our father. There seems to be something going on with all of the attention being drawn to the truth of our father's word these days. I don't know how big of a shift this is, but there seems to be a lot of people shifting towards holiness and righteousness these days. And so they ask questions. What are some of the things that they can be doing? Well, the new moon day is one of the first things that you could be doing in order to get yourself right with our father. Why? Because the inner court is opened during that day, which means that this is a special time in the relationship between you and our father. Remember that this tabernacle that he's talking about where this inner court is, is the third temple that's actually built on the hearts of humanity. He's talking about the temple inside of you where this inner court is opened. So that's a big deal. And that's why we do these classes, giving you time to prepare for this celebration. We should be preparing for the new moon celebration 
which includes a spiritual rejuvenation that also occurs on the new moon day there's a spiritual renewal that takes place again whether we know it realize it or not so if we've been having a bad month we should be looking forward to the new moon because it brings a spiritual renewal but like we said the new moon is very similar to a Sabbath day now it is not a Sabbath day let me show you how this works the first day of the month as we've been talking about is new moon day it's not a work day it's a holy day the actual first work day doesn't start until the second day of the month now this is important to understand because there's so many people confused on this point that if you're not silently grounded in this truth you can get distracted by those who ignorantly say that the Sabbath day falls on the seventh day of the month it does not the Sabbath day falls on the seventh day of the week but the week doesn't start until the second day of the month so that makes the Sabbath day to fall on the eighth day of the month now notice how the Sabbath day falls on the same day of the week as the new moon day until you get to the 29th day of the month it is after the 29th day of the month that you'll start looking for a new moon day to occur all right now to find out exactly when this day will be in August we come over to renewedmoon.com and see that we are expected to see the new moon on August the 28th that would be the evening of August the 28th and then we can confirm this when we come over to um, the US Naval Observatory's astronomical applications department page for the complete Sun and moon data for one day where we see that the moon rose almost an hour after the Sun and it sets a little more than an hour after the Sun does in the evening time which meet the requirements for the sighting of the new moon so that would make Mondays the new Sabbath day new moon day would also be on Monday the 29th and then every Monday until we have a new new moon will be a Sabbath day but anyway let's look at some fun facts related to the sixth month coming out of the King James Version of the Bible we're just looking for the word six month to see what events have actually taken place in the scripture and it looks like the six month is an important temple building month which is important considering that we are awaiting the construction or the final building of the third temple it seems to already be being built on the people's hearts now but when will that construction be finalized and we be able to go into that temple well that could have something to do with Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 1 in fact many verses in here seem to be talking about the events that have happened to Ezekiel in the sixth year in the sixth month and in the fifth day of the sixth month he says that the hand of the Lord God fell upon him on that day the fifth day of the sixth month looking at verse 3 he says and he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of mine head and the spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the vision of God to Jerusalem to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north where was the seat of the image of jealousy which provoketh to jealousy the seat of the image of jealousy verse 6 says he said furthermore unto me son of man seest thou what they do even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here that I should go far off from my sanctuary 
but turn thee yet again and thou shalt see greater abominations so this is talking about all of the horrible things that Israel is doing these days by way of breaking the law breaking the father's covenant which you can read about in Exodus chapter 20 through 23 again people are always asking for me to give guidelines on what it is that we should be doing well the guidelines are already in place just go read them Exodus chapter 20 chapter 21 chapter 22 chapter 23 and maybe even the first seven verses of Exodus chapter 24 down here in verse 16 of Ezekiel and chapter 8 we can see that his people are worshiping the Sun and doing all types of abominations I don't plan on hitting every one of these verses in here I would suggest you like I go in and read this chapter sometime around the fifth day of the month or maybe before because this could have some type of significance when it comes to the third temple it appears that Haggai got a word from the Lord on the first day of the sixth month and what is it talking about the temple so let's just step down through some of these verses in this chapter and pull out some of the highlights of what's going on here as this date could be significant when it comes to the third temple that temple that is to be built on the hearts of humanity well what's interesting in this chapter is that we'll find out that it was on the first day of the sixth month that the word of the Lord came to Haggai concerning the building of that third temple now Haggai was a prophet and during this time although Judah had been freed from the Babylon bondage they still had not constructed a temple and didn't really have a homeland yet because Jerusalem was still destroyed well it was on the first day of the sixth month that the word of the Lord came to Haggai and he went to talk to Zerubbabel the governor of Judah and Joshua the son of the high priest concerning the rebuilding of the temple now we understand that their captivity ended in 536 BC Darius the second became ruler in 424 BC so here we are in the second year of Darius the king which would have been about 422 BC but yet they haven't gotten the idea to go and start rebuilding Jerusalem yet that's over a hundred years and so our father is coming to the prophet Haggai saying hey these people ain't even thinking about building my house back yet as we see there in verse 2 were they stalling or what's going on there well before we get too harsh on this guys let's understand our current situation talking about the third temple that is being built on our hearts the hearts of all of humanity well look how much progress all of humanity is making towards the construction of that house how many people are actually trying to build our father's house on their hearts we are stalling too and maybe for the same reasons if you think of where we live as a modern-day Babylon I'm sure those people there were enjoying the culture and civilizations of the Babylon of the day taking advantage of worldly things well that is exactly what's going on now as we are delaying in building the third temple but let's go on so then came the word of the Lord telling Haggai to go to Zerubbabel and the son of the high priest and say is it time for you to dwell in your own houses while the house of the Lord lay waste you guys are building your house what about building my house back consider your ways says the Lord so it was on this day that our father is putting on the hearts of the prophet the ruler or the governor and the high priest to start considering the construction of the temple now notice this part down here in verse 6 the language kind of changes a little bit as if the father is tying their poverty or their misfortunes to 
the condition of the temple. It says, you have sown much and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Saying that your efforts are in vain. You're not really getting the fruit of your labors. Now this implies that they were covenant breakers, which they probably were. Hanging out there in Babylon, you can imagine not many of the citizens of Babylon were hurrying to keep the feast days and the other rules of the covenant. I mean, again, look at how we live today. Do you see a lot of the citizens of modern day Babylon trying to keep the commandments, statutes and the judgments that you find over in Exodus chapter 20 through 23? Well, you read over in that covenant how you are supposed to get all of these blessings when you start to keep the covenant. And a lot of those verses that talk about the blessings talk on the things that are mentioned here in verse 6 of Haggai chapter 1. Food, drink, clothing, shelter. Those are the promises of keeping the covenant. And now... That they're being mentioned here how the people, how Judah doesn't have these provisions. They are still yet breaking the covenant, which is what got them in trouble in the first place. You have to remember here in verse 8, how father is telling the Haggai to tell Zerubbabel and Joshua to go up to the mountain and bring wood and build the house. The house of the Lord, which we call the second temple, and he says that he will take pleasure in it and will be glorified in it. Now, verse 9 seems to be confirming that connection that I thought was made in verse 6 between their poverty and the house of the Lord. In fact, it comes out and says it directly. Starts off talking about how you looked for much and lo, it came to little. And even what you did find, he blew on it. Why did he blow on it? Why did you find little? Why did you not get enough to eat or enough to drink? Or why was your clothing not adequate? Or your pockets seemed to have holes in it? Why did all of this happen? Say if the Lord of hosts, because of mine house that is waste, and you run every man unto his own house. So this applies to us today. We're focusing on our own houses and not concerned with the house of the Lord. The third temple we need to learn to start building in the third temple now he continues on to talk about these curses you can see there in verse 10 therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew and the earth is stayed from her fruit and I called for a drought upon the land all of this is going on even after the 70 years of captivity has ended why because they haven't taken the time to rebuild the temple. The temple is extremely important. And you think that our temple, the second temple, was destroyed even before 70 AD. And we haven't taken the time to build it back. Well, look at the world of today. Do you think we're in a blessed status or in a cursed status? He brought a drought upon the land, the mountains, the corn, the new wine and the oil which as I mentioned a few minutes ago are all tied to the blessings that we were supposed to get when we keep the covenant when we keep the covenant all of these things are blessed but when we stop keeping the covenant all of these things are cursed and it should be noted that the new covenant and the third temple are tied together the more I understand about the New Covenant, the New Jerusalem, and the Third Temple, I'm coming to the conclusion that they are actually all the same thing. We're actually talking about the same event. When we're talking about the New Covenant, we're talking about the Third Temple being built on the hearts of humanity. And how and why do I say that? Because they're actually going to be placed by the same person our father in the same place which is our heart or our conscience both of them are going to be built on our conscience by whom 
by our Father. The only question is, will they be built at the same time? And I believe they are. I believe they are tied together. Verse 11 goes on to talk about the land or the ground that bringeth forth. Talking about vegetables and our crops. Upon the men, which is talking about us. And upon our cattle, where we get our meat from. And upon the labor of our hands. This is definitely talking about the covenant. This is tying the covenant and the temple together. So as you're listening to this video, I hope you're hearing the spirit inside of you jumping up and down saying, I want to build the third temple. I want to build the temple. I want to rebuild the wastelands. Listen to that voice. You see all of these blessings associated with it if you were to do so. So I would advise you to listen to it. Jump over and read Exodus chapter 20 through 23. That's probably the first thing you can do. Making sure that you understand what's going on there in that book of the covenant. And if you have any questions, you can come back over and ask us here. That's what we're here for. To help you guys as much as we can. We are the repairers of the breach, repairing the paths to dwell in, as you read about over there in Isaiah chapter 58, which reminds me the other thing that we should be doing is preparing for the feast days and the Sabbath day. Those are the most important things that we can be doing in order to rebuild the covenant. But let's go on. So down here in verse 12, you see that Zerubbabel and Joshua... As well as the remnant of the people obey the voice of the Lord their God. You hear about a remnant over there in the book of Revelation. And it's talking generally about the same people. Verse 14 says, And the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the governor of Judah, and the spirit of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and the spirit of all of the remnant of the people. And they came and did work in the house of the Lord of hosts, their God. Those that are the most prepared, those that have already started embracing the old covenant will be the first to have the third temple built on their hearts it is this new covenant new jerusalem the third temple that's going to be the protections that people need i'm not going to say humanity because a lot of humanity is going away a lot of people are going to die during these plagues but it is those that have this temple built on their hearts, those that are prepared and obedient to the covenant, that will have angelic help to protect them and preserve them and lead them to safety and food and water and clothing during the most tribulous times of the apocalypse that will have these individuals to be saved from the tribulation. So that they can emerge on the other side of the tribulation. Ready to repopulate the earth. Just like Noah did. That's the mission of the 144,000. And that multitude that will be standing with them. These are the few millions of people that will survive this apocalypse. That's going to have to repopulate the entire earth. A lot of people are going away. A lot of people are going away. There's a lot of people that's looking forward to that day. Surprisingly. But I said I'm going to stop talking about them people too much. So let's go on. Verse 16 says. In the 4 and 20th day of the 6th month. In the 2nd year of Darius the king. Is when they actually started the construction of the 2nd temple. So this is an important date too. And hopefully for you new guys to the channel, it would excite you, get your spirit stirred up so that you will want to start keeping the covenant, start keeping the Sabbath day holy, and start keeping the feast days. These feast days are extremely important as we've talked about. But anyway... Let's jump back over here to Haggai and 1. 
And one last thing that I can mention here before we close this video out is how this could all be pointing to a secret rapture. I've heard this term used before, but think about it. If you only have the spirit of the remnant who is now going in to construct the third temple, which is to be built on the hearts of humanity three and a half years before the rest of the world even knows about it this third temple is that not a secret rapture and of course I'm using the word rapture with the traditional definition of the word and that is a mystical experience in which the spirit is exalted to a knowledge of divine things. So how could it not be a secret when the rest of the world will be intentionally trying to ignore these guys as they want to remain in a Babylonian type culture and don't want to embrace the ways of the kingdom of heaven just yet. And plus is only affecting the remnant. This is what I believe they call your secret rapture. But I said I was going to stop speculating. So I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. If you got something out of it, go ahead and hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button. But leave us a comment either way. Check out these end screens that are popping up right now. Pointing you to some videos that you should be highly interested in right now and may our father bless you and keep you and may our father make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you may our father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace I love you guys Godspeed and Shalom